Hey everybody, this is Amanda from Amanda's Budgets. We are here to talk about my June budget and what in the heck is going on with it because it is going to be scab picking, band-aid ripping off in uh, situations that I have no idea. I am lost. I am confused on what I'm supposed to do. Um, this is my real life on a low income doing budgeting finances all the things, cash stuffing, sinking funds, savings challenges on a low income. So, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Amanda. I am 35. I live in Oregon and I'm an all cash budgeter. I live in the top five most expensive states to live in. And why am I still here? Because I live in this 1966 single wide that I got for $5,000. And I am the runner-up for the possible biggest dumpster fire of all budgets in time, in a really long time, in, in this, this hot seat over here that I'm sitting in, because we're here <laughs> to talk about what it's going to look like, okay? So we had our April budget, and then we went on to... May. And now we are going to be on to June. I started writing this budget because these two things never change. These are my biggest bills. My space rent, if you don't know what space rent it is, it is the land in which I rent or lease, I should really be technical, I lease the land that my home is sitting on. I don't own the land here. So I have space rent, which is still way cheaper than my two bedroom, one and a half bath, um, shithole of apartment <laughs> that would have been fourteen eighty a month. But I'm on a little bit of a time crunch to get this budget figured out. And I'm going to tell you why, because this budget is going to be really hard. I've got two things coming in June. Well, actually, three. We'll be real three. School is ending. I do not have child care for my children during summertime, so that puts me in a position and my husband in a position while co-parenting our two boys. Um, how to make a proper budget, talk about scheduling. What is a schedule? What's the plan? There is no summer plan yet, you guys. And it's making me nervous because it's the end of May. There's no plan. Zero. No plan. So, we know these two bills are not going to change. We are going to go over what I think is going to be my estimated bill for my utilities, my car insurance doesn't really change. Our phone bills went down a little bit, down 200 a month, which is nice. Our internet is going to stay the same, and we're going to just give an estimate on our groceries for the month. Um, we're not going to talk about savings challenges and sinking funds in this because this is a bare bones budget. I only write out a bare bones budget so that way I know what I need to survive the month, survive each week of the month or bi bi-weekly pay period of the month. So, the other two things that are going to happen in my world that are going to be very interesting because I don't know how they're going to go. I don't have a time machine to fast forward my life to jump to the future. And I also have never done this before. I am going in the first week of June for my thyroid ablation, and I can't work for three days. Three days. Yes, reality of not working for three days is going to be a rough, rough one. So, I have to figure out how to make a budget that's going to fit with my needs for the first week of June, and hopefully I can possibly make up for my three days of missed work at the beginning of the month. Because I don't have sick pay. I'm not going to have sick pay. 
Um, my print shop job is very part-time and doesn't pay much. Like my last paycheck was $218 and some change. And so I can't sustain off of that for a week. Um, especially with, you know, inflation and food cost and all the things like everything is expensive right now. Another thing that we're trying out is my husband officially got the labor job that may or may not be seasonal. We have no idea yet because we know little about this job. He applied, he got it, he got a um, letter in an email for a um, offer letter, so he did take that. It isn't as high paying as I had anticipated, but he's happy with it and he wants to give it a shot and see if it's something that he can do completely. It's completely new to him. Completely new. So, um, we're going to see how those three things pan out. Summertime with kids, my medical procedure, and my husband starting that job. So, my hope is that I can map this out and try to figure this out. Let me do some self-funded independent research, do a few things on a plain sheet of paper before we go ahead and write the final result on our budgeting sheets. So I will be back. Let me grab this piece of paper and we're going to try to map this out. All right, you guys, I'm back. I have no idea what just happened <laughs> and I'm laughing a little bit but I'm crying a little bit on the inside because holy cow I don't know I don't know like has anybody wrote down your budget in the last couple months and gone what in the dumpster fire depths of hell just happened to my budget because I don't feel like this budget is very large but at the same time it's a realistic budget this this is a real budget this is as low as i could go for the entirety of the month and we're going to go over it so this is the monthly budget so we have our space rent of 550 we have our car payment this is not my real car payment this is my over the car payment um so that way i chip away at some of that interest and all the other things, right? Um, and actually, honestly, you guys, I don't have that much longer in my car. Like, it's, it's a lot less time than I thought. So, my car payment should be completed by probably March of 2026. And I know for some of you guys, it's like, oh my god, that's a long time. No, no. It's really not. And, and actually, we're down to less than 15000 on this car. Um, mind you, I bought it brand new. Brand new, spanking new, zero mi miles on it, zero. I'm bubble wrapped in front of me. So please don't judge me and give me some nasty comment about, oh my god, your car payment's high. You already know. You don't need to tell me. I live it. I live it. All right. So then we went on to utilities. I still want to budget my utilities a little high, even though my actual utility bill was 147 and I threw a little extra at it um, from this last time. Um, but I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be doing this whole I'm going to put 140 down and then it'd be 160. I want to stay in the 170 range um, until I know it's summertime and it's officially going down. However, we did just install our um, new to us but $15 find on um, or at a yard sale quite a while back. Um, and we've never used it. Um, but we got a, um, air, air conditioner with a hose that you stick it in the window and then it has a little rolly cart looking thing and it's, it's got the, 
ability to adjust it from there. Um, it's going to work better for a small space, so we might have to run that soon because this is a hot box. It's metal. Um, my, my manufactured home is 1966, so it's all metal, um, which is good and bad. It means it's really, really, really frigid cold in the, in the wintertime, and in the summertime, it's hot. Um, our phone bill, I am giving us $215. My husband said it's 200, but I want to have that little extra buffer of $15 just in case. Um, if I don't need it, then it can go to something else, right? Internet is always 65. That's the cheapest bill I have in this whole lot of things. Um, my car insurance is uh, 250, but they did add a fee on there of $4.50 to pay my car insurance. So we're going to add the fee on there this time. Uh, credit cards are yet again over my minimum credit card balance. Um, so most of my credit cards are three to five hundred dollars. Um, I only have four credit cards in total, one of which doesn't even really get used. So this is actually going towards paying down those debts and I'm actually getting pretty close on one of them. So I think by the end of June, I should only have really three credit card payments, but I'm going to try to keep it at around 300 So that way I keep snowballing some of that uh, money into the other credit card payments. So we can pay those down as well. Um, personal bill. This is just a bill that's my husband's and I am putting the $2 fee on there because they charge us yet again a $2 fee. And then we're going on to variable expenses because this is my wallet for the month. So we have groceries at $320, that's $80 a week. Pet supplies at $200, $200 sits about right for us because we can buy dry um, animal food for cats and dogs and crickets and um, a rat for our reptiles um, and then we should be golden. We don't really have any other pets in this house. I don't want any more of a zoo than I already have. Um, fuel. Oh, wait a minute. Household supplies is 60. I don't really need a lot of house supplies. I usually just buy laundry soap, um, or I buy things like garbage bags, shampoo, conditioner, and I buy stuff really super cheap. I usually stop, stop at the Dollar Tree or Dollar General, but lately I've just been doing all of my regular household shopping at Winco Foods because I'm actually finding that I'm not getting a better deal at those two other stores for some items because shrinkflation is happening where we're getting, we're paying more for less. Um, fuel is $100 a week because we do, I do drive mostly for a living. I do work part-time um, at a print shop, but yet again, it's not that much. I don't, I don't work a lot of hours, and I've actually had to reduce my hours a little bit because I wasn't making enough to make it math out um, because he wanted me to work in the middle of the day, like 11 to 6, and if I'm only going to make a little above minimum wage, I'm there for experience, not necessarily pay. My pay is going to come from my gig working job, jobs, because I have multiple apps. Um, my husband does have something he wants to buy for $100 this month, and it is gaming related. Um, we never budget for, for spending because we don't really spend any money. If you've been on this channel long enough, you know the nitty gritty is we just don't have any money to spend. But this month is going to be a magical month for him since he is starting that job. I want him to feel like he can at least splurge a little bit on the one thing he spends money on one time a year. And that is his Destiny DLC. He does play with his dad and his brother and his best friend um, and his, his other friend that we see on a regular basis. Um, so, that's something that he likes to do, and I'm not going to sit there and belittle him and be mean about it, and I don't want you to be mean about it either. 
because it is something he enjoys. Um, I'm not going to say anything about you sitting at Chick-fil-A in the parking lot eating your lunch that cost you too much money. It's $100. It's one time a year. I get a lot of flack about that, by the way. Um, Amanda, which is me. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's me. Yep. Sometimes I wish it wasn't me, but it's me, nonetheless. <laughs> um, but Amanda, <laughs> this, this, this person right here, she needs $100 to spend, too, because if Jordan gets to spend $100... Amanda gets to spend a hundred dollars because we're adults and and we want to be equal in this house and I kind of want to put it towards something I want um, or may need. Um, the boys, because it is summertime and I've got two boys, nine and thirteen, almost ten, whew, almost ten and thirteen, and uh, they're gonna want to do some things this summer and maybe we're out doing our thing and. He wants to stop somewhere and have an ice cream or uh, my other kid is needing 15 bucks all the time. 10 bucks, mom. 15. Do you got 15 bucks, mom? Can you send me a gift card to my Xbox? Yeah, I mean, they're kids and I want to make them happy and it's summertime and there's a lot of dread going on in the world right now, and kids don't need to be involved in that. So, I figured I'd give them $100 too. So, $300 in spending, which is not usual for my budget. I could cut it out if I have to, and I might. I might. But don't judge me, because y'all are sitting in the Chick-fil-A friggin' parking lot. I know you are, boo-boo. It's okay. It's okay. You do you. Don't judge me, because I'm not judging you. Um, you went to McDonald's and got your your um, your uh, frappe and your your sandwich, and it cost you five dollars a day. And five times, you know, five is quite a bit of money for breakfast, in my opinion. But you know, nobody's judging you. Ain't nobody judging you. And nobody judging you for your car payment. Don't judge me for mine. Don't don't go there. Don't go there. I mean, mind you, when I got my car, you guys was living in it. They didn't know that. <laughs> they didn't know that. But I was living in it. But this is our breakdown. This is the best I could do. This was the best I could do. Specifically this week one. Because all these other weeks have lots of stuff. And this one is high. Um, but mind you, Mr. Jordan is going to try that uh, labor job. And the labor job pays well over what they pay here in, in this town. It is in the city. So that also gives me a higher chance at making better money. Because I get to dawdle around the city instead of my little town to make better money. So, the hope is that we will land on our feet, because that's high. I mean, mind you, I can, I can break some of this down. Um, maybe not fuel, but maybe I don't need household supplies, so we just get rid of that. Scratch it off. Cut it out. Maybe we don't need... 40, or maybe we only need $40 in groceries. Maybe we don't need a bunch of pet supplies that week. But these have to stay. These, these are staples. I know it sounds weird, and, and I know, like, I didn't have enough room to, like, categorize it out, but in my brain, this is how I do it. I categorize, these are my staples, these are my minimal things I have to pay in order to survive to make it through the day. So if I didn't stuff the rest of this and, and, and maybe we only just stuffed that part or, or maybe we took out groceries too and we only stuffed fuel and our bare basics for week one, I'm, I'm okay with that. You know, I mean, there's a food bank down the street from me that's open three days a week and twice a month they open it to the entirety of the community 
and they give away piles and piles and piles of food. So I'm not really worried as much about the food thing. Plus I have a lot of food. I have that 7.1 cubic foot freezer. I have tons of canned food. And then we also have a full freezer in our regular fridge with the pulley out drawer. And um, by the way, if you hear my cat, Joan, she's the kitten. She's, she's a little crackhead, man. She's like all over the place right now. She has found my, my son's box of stuffed animals that he needs to go put in his room. Um, and she loves that shark. Man, maybe they're besties. <laughs> Land shark, kid shark. Yeah, they can be friends, right? So, as always, I try my best to do what I can with what I got, and this is what I have to work with. And maybe I revise this before I write it down on these budget by paycheck sheets. That's why I do this first. This is the most important sheet other than this one. This one is our monthly. This one breaks down all the other things. It's really not hard, guys. Shoot, shoot. Each square has its own week. And then you figure it out by then. Okay, when's my phone due? Okay, I can make that stretch. Okay, it's due by third week. Okay, um, week one is one the first through the seventh. Week two is the seventh through the fourteenth. So on and so forth. I mean, it's, it's really self-explanatory to figure it all out. Maybe you don't get paid weekly. Why did I do a weekly uh, budget by paycheck when I know my husband's probably going to get paid bi-weekly? Because I still get paid weekly and I'm not going to guarantee his money until I know it's a for sure thing, right? Because it's new. And we, we can only work on our for sure jobs, which is what I've got, you know? And it's not that he doesn't want to work, you guys. Bless his, bless his little heart. He wants to work. He just doesn't want to work for peanuts. And the last job he worked was a really big disappointment. Um, and actually it was two, two jobs. And by the way, it took, it took them a month to pay him 10 hours at the pizza place after he got his paycheck from the car wash because they own the car wash and the pizza place. But he was like, well, I got the paycheck from this, but where's my 10 hours? And it wasn't necessarily the 10 hours. It was like, 80 bucks after taxes, 80, 85 bucks after taxes. And it was more of a principal thing than anything. So, you know, I mean, he's hesitant and I, I don't blame him. And he was like, well, I think I'm going to take this job in the city because in our, in the city we grew up in, in our, our home area, because this is definitely not our home area, it's more of a guarantee than it is working in this little town. And we didn't know that coming here. We, we just thought that everyone was personable, um, reliable, respectful, um, kind. We thought that everybody um, who owned a business did all the right things and paid their people. And, you know, the wage was roughly around the same, but that's not the case, you know, and, and it is what it is. And, you know, maybe you live in one town and you work in another. A lot of people commute for a living. Um, another thing I don't want to hear in, in comments in this video is, Amanda, this is just too high. I know that. I know that. That is high. I know that. But I can only do so much with what I've got. I can only break this down so much. Inflation is killing us here. Inflation is really high. Uh, food is the highest it's been. Housing's the highest it's been. We're all struggling. I feel like my nails on, I feel like nails on chalkboard by the end of the day if I don't make a certain amount of money um, or work a certain amount of hours. So I'm feeling the pinch too, but I have to figure out 
how I'm going to plan all this out because this week here, week one, I'm going to be down for three days. I have that radioactive ablation. They're going to give me a radioactive uh, pill. I am going to take the pill and the, and actually technically day one starts the morning I take the pill. Um, and I have a whole list of instructions I have to do and I have to sleep in my own bed. I can't um, share a bed with my husband. Um, he's going to have to sleep in the boys room and they're not going to be here because they can't be here. Um, I can't be around children or pregnant women for three days during that time. So um, I work in the general public and I do gig working. I'm in and out of um, buildings. I'm in and out of my vehicle, um, you know, and I'm around people. So I don't want to put anybody at risk, but I also need to make sure that I can make this budget. So I got to get the heck out of here. I, I got to blow this popsicle stand because it's Friday and I'm going to be working my little Lamborghinis and my, my uh, driving skills today the best I can because um, every dollar is going to count. By the end of the month, if I can finish the 200 envelope challenge, I don't know what I'm doing with this. This goes here. If I can finish the 200 envelope challenge and I can add to this first week um, with the last week of May, then that will be great. We just have to limp it until we make it, right? Do what you can with what you got because it's all you have to work with. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.